I want to remind you of a neat feature that some people have asked about. It's where you might have a bit of text and you might have an image or an SVG icon. And as you scroll down, it overlaps the text, but it almost fades out of view as well. This is really simple and easy to do without having to use too many containers. And I'm going to show you how. What we got is a parent container that I've just called stag over here. And inside of there, we have a heading, we have an image. We have another heading at the bottom, which is down here. It could be a subheading, could be a text editor. And then we have a button as well. Now this stag container is actually 100 VH and it's 100% as well. It's currently set as a column because obviously we've got our things sat below one another. I've also justified everything to be at the end. If I was to remove that, can you see how my heading and button has shot up to the top? What you will find the best advice I can give is that you get all your components onto the page. So if it's going to be a container layout, your heading, your image, your heading, your button, anything else you want to add, just go and add it on. You can start to manipulate where they sit later on. Now we are going to be using some positioning and for anyone that's kind of familiar with the whole overlap effect, this should not be rocket science to you, but I'm going to break it down step by step. So we've got our container, we've got our elements inside of there. Like I said, you know, you can see the details over here, zero for the margins for the row and columns. Style, I haven't really done anything there and in the advanced tab, I've just zeroed out the margins and paddings. You don't have to zero out. It's a force of habit. People do say to me, by doing that, you're adding in extra lines of CSS code. Seriously, that's like a tiny bit of CSS code that no one's going to lose sleep over. We don't have any class name and we have no custom CSS. So from the get go, the container is very, very basic and it is just one parent container. Let's now go over to our heading. We have a bit of text. If you want to turn it into a link, you could do go and size it up. I would recommend you use font clamp, obviously, so it resizes when you go from desktop to mobile. Now, when we go over to the advanced tab, this is where it gets interesting. Because when you drop that in, you'll notice over here at the moment, there is no margin, there is no padding, but you will see here for the position it is currently set to be fixed. And we have an offset of 80 and we have a Z index of minus one. They are the three important things you have to take into account if you are going to have a bit of an overlap effect. Let me show you what would have happened if we had left it as default. It currently just sits in the center. Well, it's not even in the center. I like it's more towards the bottom because don't forget our parent container. If we go back, we have justified to be at the end. Let's go back over to the heading again. So by making it a fixed position, I have said that I want it to forever be fixed in that location. Now, there are two ways you could do your positioning. You could either go for fixed, which means it will stay there no matter where you scroll up and down on the website. Even if you have 50 containers or sections, that unleash will remain there at the top. But if I was to go for absolute, as I scroll down, can you see what it's doing? It's no longer staying in place. So it will be fixed for that container. Doesn't matter what I add on the screen, it will allow me to overlap, but it now moves as I scroll. But if I was to go for a fixed like that, it stays fixed. And that's the effect I want to get. Now you are going to say, but what happens when you get to container number two and container number three? Because we've made this heading and I've lost it be a minus one, a lot of people always start with zero. I actually start with minus one because what that now means is every other container I add is always going to be higher than that heading. And that means that every other container and section we get to, it's going to scroll over that particular heading. So for anyone out there that always starts at zero or goes, oh, I'll give it number one. And then container two, I'll call it number two and container three, I'll call number three. You could just start with minus one. It's a bit of a trick that a lot of people don't really use quite a bit. And it's never explained now there, but you could do that. And when I've got an offset of 80, let me just get rid of that and set that to be zero. And it now sits right at the top. So when you first use a fix, it will either be in the top or in the far left. And you can start to adjust that. And what I've done is I have made my offset 80 pixel like that. Then we go over to our image. Now, this image is actually got a transparent background, which is why you will see some of the text behind bleed through. You don't have to follow that example. 
But if you have got a transparent image or an icon, could even be extra text. You could have text overlapping. You know, it might be a different color for whatever effect you want to go for, or glow, shadow effect or something. The style of it is go and set your sizing. Remember, you're going to have to adjust the sizing whenever you get to the mobile advanced tab. We then are now using the absolute position. So I've just explained to you the heading is fixed, stays in place. The stag head is absolute. So it is going to be positioned where I want it to be, but I don't want it to be fixed because if it was fixed, when I scroll down, that stag head would not move. It would just stay stuck over there. So you wouldn't get the overlap effect. So you can now see that I've got it set to absolute. And again, I've added in some vertical offsetting of 165. Let me just show you if I was to get rid of that, it goes all the way to the top. If I was to make this be ridiculously big, it would go down way more than it needs to be. And I've set it to be 165. I've also given it a Zen index of two. I could have started at one. I just went in for two just to make sure it definitely overlaps. Sometimes you want to be really, really sure, right? And that's it. And that's literally all I had to do there. Then what I've got is a heading. Now, this is where I had to think a little bit because I've got a bit of a blur effect. Can you see over there? We've got a gradient appearing over the heading. Now, you could, if you want, put a child container into there and add in a gradient. I thought, well, I don't need to do that. I'll just go to my heading, um, set it with whatever text you want to go for, give it a text color, font clamp. And then I went over to the background and I just added in a gradient. That's how simple it is, right? You don't have to always use child gradient. So this button, which also has some padding, 100, uh, 25, 75, 575, because I wanted to squash the heading text in a bit. Um, you can see there's a lot of space over there. So that's where we're getting in the 100. You go to your background and we've got a white color at the bottom and we have a transparent color at the top. Go and set your percentages for the location. I mean, look, if I was to go and make this be 50 and 50, you're going to get that hard line over there, which I don't want. So I wanted to have more of a gradient and I felt that worked better. It feels more gradual. If you want it to be more of a sharper gradient as you flow up, you can do that. And I've gone and set my angle. Like, look, you know, if you want to adjust it, you could do so if you want to have it a slope or the flip it the other way around. So for this particular heading within those pink lines, you go from transparent, fully transparent down to white. And when we get to this button over here, again, go and set your button up, your, your padding, your border radius, etc. We go over to the background color. And this is where, and I do want to make a point of this. Again, I've got a bit of padding at the bottom. I've added in 50 just to push it away from the bottom. You could have done this on the parent container. I know that's what you're probably thinking. Why don't you just add in 50 there? Why are you doing it to the button? Because when I get to the mobile, I may want to rearrange things a little bit and I have a bit more control. You don't have to always do it to the container. You can do it to the individual elements. This button is set to be a full width. Uh, by the way, the button is sent to be positioned in the center. And then we go down to the background and this is where I've made it white. And I'm just going to make a point. If I'd made it red, you can see what it's doing. Why did I make it go white? Well, quite simply, because I wanted to ensure it's definitely white. When you go over to the mobile, I mean, I haven't played around with this properly, with my image sizing, but it's the same thing. You would have gone over to your heading. You would have now adjusted your offsetting. So now we've gone from 80 to 14 for my image. Again, you would have adjusted your offsetting. So we've gone from, I think, 165 to 140. And then go and adjust, you know, your gradient if you want, your start and stop. So you still get that gradient effect as you scroll past the text. It's not that difficult to do at all if you want to have a bit of overlapping. I'm Imran from Web Squadron. Like, subscribe, share and follow. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye.